Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Speaking Frankly, where we are going to be featuring honest talk with thought leaders across the entire advertising ecosystem. I am Kim Frank, Geopath President and Speaking Frankly host. So today I am truly honored to um, be joined by our very first guest, CEO and Managing Director of the Coalition for Innovative Media Measurement, market research expert, industry icon, and my very own personal idol, Jane Clark. Jane, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> I think the uh, feeling is mutual and uh, I'm really happy to be here. I love the pun on Frank and frankly, you know. This thank is you. <laughs> it's a convenient name. So um, SIM is a really unique organization. I would love it if you could tell us a little bit bit about the organization it was self, uh, itself, how it came together, how it was formed, what your mission is? Sure. So it was actually formed about 10 years ago uh, during the last uh, recession. They had the idea just before the recession, and it was uh, Alan Ortzel, who was just honored last week by the Media uh, Research Council. Uh, and he went straight to his boss, and they were in the middle of a complex Nielsen contract negotiation, and they're like, hey, you know, there's all this set-top box data, there's all these new ways that we might be able to create new measurement systems. Um, why don't we start a uh, coalition of companies to look into this and push for innovation? And they went to top to top, you know, to all the TV, video, media companies at the time. And then they went to the agencies and they brought a handful of large advertisers. And the original idea was they were all going to put in a million dollars each and they were going to, I hate to say this, um, put Nielsen out of business in two years. Um, now that was rather unrealistic expectation. <laughs> and what also happened was that the uh, recession hit in 2009 and, you know, 2008, 2009 time. And uh, they, by the time they got through all of that, and it took them a year to go to Washington with all the legal questions of, can we do this? You know, which you guys are well aware of uh, at Geopath. And um, so by the time they finally got through all of that, they ended up that everyone was gonna put in a hundred thousand. And, you know, we probably wouldn't have enough money to create a new measurement system, but we should push for innovation in cross-media measurement and bring more granular measurement into television and do whatever we could do, you know, pilot tests, white papers, anything in those areas. And that's when they hired me on January 1st, 2010. <laughs> and you are now part of the Advertising Research Foundation, correct? Yes. So a couple of years ago, the industry, we all just kind of decided there's a lot of overlap between my steering committee, the board, and the ARF. Uh, and so we decided that it was better to be part of a larger organization. So they acquired us, we're an affiliate, and uh, we're kind of a subspecialty of within the ARF. So we have all the same you know, mission and goals and objectives, um, but it's very helpful to have a link to a larger organization. And there are a lot of really smart people and uh, their services help us a lot too. So it's, it's a great uh, partnership. That's fantastic. So along the way, what are some of the challenges that you guys have had to overcome? Well, you know, this whole area of cross-media measurement, I have to say I did a, uh, a little uh, opinion piece this summer and, you know, counted at least 16 um, initiatives in cross-media measurement. Uh, and, and that was probably only partially including all the proprietary ones. So it's only become you know, more and more relevant as all the fragmentation continues to occur. And I would say that I realized after the first few years that it wasn't just a technical challenge. There are some really big technical issues still to solve in terms of particularly how you go from digital media, which is kind of individual device based to uh, television, you know, which right now the data is household based data uh, and the panel data has not really been merged with that, you know, that more granular household based data to get to the kind of person's level data so that you can make these links between digital and television. So that's, that's a huge uh, challenge. And, um, but what, what this takes is it takes the business leaders to get involved and the marketers. And that's really what's happened in the last few years is 
uh, the business leaders have realized this is a business issue. If we're going to change measurement, change currency, start bringing in all these additional platforms into our, t our current TV, you know, Nielsen C3 ratings um, system, or come up with a new system, you know, this is a huge business <laughs> change. And so, you know, now all, all the heads of the sales at all the networks and, you know, even on the programming side, you know, everyone's paying attention to measurement closely. And in the last year or so, the marketers um, have been the last group to finally say, hey, we really care about this. We want to manage frequency. We want to understand deduplicated reach. Um, we want to get that across television and all digital media and actually ultimately all platforms, you know? So, uh, you know, when you look at it from a marketer point of view, they they really want to have comparable metrics and deduplicated reach across all media. And it's a big ask, um, but it's, it's really important to have them at the table. And that's been a huge change in the last couple of years. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's how we're structured here too. We try and get everybody to collaborate on coming up with a solution together. So when you're talking about cross media right now in the SIM universe, what are the channels that are included in that cross media landscape? Well, you know, because our founders were the sort of TV based media companies at the time, um, we did we do have a very strong focus on cross platform video. So all forms of television, live, time shifted, audience data driven, uh, you know, the um, and, and now all the new forms of digital video, including, you know, any kind of streaming on a website or streaming um, content over the top, you know, meaning through the internet to a lot of different devices, mobile devices, computers and connected TVs, you know, or CTVs. So, now that you have, um, you know, data coming from all these uh, combination, of, there's a, we did a chart this summer with um, Ernst & Young on a project we were working on, and there's like 20 plus ways you can buy TV inventory now. And they range across all of these different kind of platforms that don't all have the same measurement coming off of them. You know, even VOD, cable VOD is different, addressable, linear, all the forms of digital. So to be able to put that all together is a huge challenge. Um, we obviously recognize that from a marketer point of view, you want all media, you know, and all platforms to finally end up in a way that a marketer can, you know, look at a campaign and look at the deduplicated reach across all media and understand the impact uh, across all media, you know, what where things work better than others. I mean, that's their ideal uh, solution. Um, but the, the SIM piece right now, because there's so many issues in getting the TV and premium video kind of in a holistic way, um, we're very focused on that. Great. So like on a scale of one to 11, with 11 being the best, where what is the current status of all of that measurement coming together in some kind of cross-platform way? Are, are you still at the beginning stages? Are you in the middle? Are you towards the end? Oh my god, we're definitely not at 11. Um, <laughs> I love your scale. Uh, <laughs> it's the spinal tap scale. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that we're kind of in the middle. You know, we're getting some of the tools. We're probably around a five or a six or something, you know. We're, we're getting uh, some of the data and the tools together. We're recognizing that there's all these data streams. I mean, even the Media Rating Council has, you know, tried to put forth a, a comparable metric to use across all platforms. People may still disagree with that, and there'll probably be more discussion about that. But we have, you know, a straw man for that. Uh, we're also starting to get ways to do this ID resolution. Um, you know, there's a bunch of companies that are doing it and this is all happening within the context of, you know, losing cookies on the internet where the, the, the technique that everyone used to track some form of identity, at least to a device or a browser, <laughs> you know, that's going to go away. And so the whole industry, you know, the IAB, the tech lab, everyone's, you know, globally, it's like, what are we going to do now? How are we going to have some kind of a universal measurement identifier 
so that's a big issue. Um, it it kind of goes beyond SIM. There's there's million, there's you know hundreds of organizations I think all around the world trying to think about that and collaborate on that. Uh, but, but you know, but that's huge. Right. So even in the absence of you know a really sophisticated cross-platform media measurement system for video, um, even going all the way back to linear television, right, which still has its own measurement hurdles. It hasn't prevented advertisers from investing in all of these channels, right? So if you do, are, if you are able to bring it together in a more cohesive, more comprehensive platform, do you think that will result in more dollars going to the channel or does it just allow for advertisers to better account for the dollars they've spent? Yeah, you know, I, I do think that um, advertisers just want to be smarter, you know, about where they're putting the money and, and how much they're putting and they want to know when they're getting the results. So I, I'm not sure it will actually sort of change the total overall. You know, it's hard to say really at this point without having some of the tools in place. Um, but I do think that uh, it will help to make much smarter decisions about knowing, you know, where where placements are working, you know, where, the, where they're not. I mean, just the ability in television, we don't even measure ads in television right now, which is just crazy. You know, television measures the average of all of the ads in an entire show and gives that same number to every single ad in every position in every pod. I mean, it's, it's just kind of nuts. And the, uh, even in other countries, they at least do minute measurement or pod measurement. You know, they don't, but, but we really don't have ad measurement and it's all of a sudden coming to a head because of the launch of addressable in addressable TV. You have to be able to do spot level measurement because um, with a panel, you can't break out who got the addressable ads and who didn't, you know, right now that's the big, um, the, you know, barrier that's holding back uh, a lot of the national networks opening up their inventory for, for addressability because Nielsen cannot break apart the addressable and the unaddressable. So it's forcing everybody, Nielsen, Comscore, all of the companies in this, um, you know, TV video measurement space, it's forcing all of them to come up with ways where they have to get the data now from all the data owners. You know, the MVPDs are data owners, the media companies are data owners. It's actually, you know, it, it's in some ways a lot more like what you guys are doing, where you have a lot of very granular data um, and you have to pull it all together. Although I guess that maybe that analogy is not 100% uh, fit, fit there because in this case, the data owners really need to get involved and give permission for their data to be part of the new system. And, and that's, that's a big challenge. <laughs> so that actual, it actually is slowing down the progression of addressable television. Yeah, yeah, it is. Talking because... a little bit about addressable TV and what that is and, and the current status of that as an advertising opportunity. Yeah, so addressable has been happening for years, but in the local minutes. So I don't know if all your members understand that television has this kind of weird bifurcation now between, you know, national television, national television measurement, national minutes, and local uh, television, local minutes. Um, in the in the whole cable world, what they did was the local minutes that in broadcast had gone to the local stations that all went to the MVPDs, the local cable operators, and they got their two minutes an hour. And so what they've been able to do for years is they can do, uh, they can get different ads to different zones, cable zones, groups of homes. Um, and increasingly they can send ads to, uh, you know, special ads to each home, home addressable, household addressable television, they can increasingly do. And so this has been great for all the local advertisers, you know, the, uh, for years, the MVPDs have been taking their data, uh, creating segments, audience segments, you know, people who visit the local car dealer, and they can then go, you know, send an ad directly to my house about, you know, some new offering at my local car dealer. Um, and so it's worked really well in local, but the uh, national networks haven't been able to do this. And you know, because of the fact that they have a different measurement system, 
um, this this cable local addressable, it was it's kind of in a way so under the radar that it didn't really impact the Nielsen local measurement ratings that are used because they, you know, that's like quarter hour ratings, content ratings anyway, you know? And so nobody kind of really cared that there's some addressability in there and, you know, whatever, it's not a big deal. But when you get to the national minutes and all that national money, they, they can't do that. They can't just start breaking up the C3 ratings. It, it doesn't work. And so that's what really what's driving um, this whole, you know, new growth in the, uh, in measurement because you have to change it to allow the national networks to do the addressable advertising. And that's what the advertisers want. You know, they want to do what they've been doing in digital for years is to find an audience, you know, define an audience first. So they have to make their segment definition, go find where that is in any media and then, you know, go buy it and then go evaluate it in the back end and, you know, repeat, rinse and repeat basically, you know take your learning and, and go back to the beginning in, in your planning. So, you know, you and I have had lunch a few times and we talk about how out of home is getting more and more digital. We do have tons and tons of digital network screens all over the country, a lot of them showing video content. Do we then start to fit into the same ecosystem as all of this other video content that Sim is focused on? Uh, well, the short answer is yet. Yes, I think we're still kind of figuring out exactly what that um, could be. And, you know, that's why I've been so happy that Geopath has joined Sim. And now, um, am I allowed to say that I'm going to join Go your ahead. order? Are you going to say that? <laughs> I'll just give it a little backstory. So, you know, I was digging through the bylaws at Geopath when I first came on, and there are seats for nonprofits on the Geopath Board of Directors. There's a seat for the ANA, which we filled with Bob Yadis, who is the CEO of the Association of National Advertisers. Uh, a couple years ago, Bill Bach from the four A's joined our board. And I recently saw that there is a seat for someone from the ARF. So Jane has agreed to sit in the ARF seat on the Geopath Board of Directors, which has been vacant for, I think, around 15 years. So super excited to have Jane on there, but also super excited to have somebody who has some real research chops across all of the channels and really understands the challenges that other channels are facing. So I think in a lot of ways, we in Out of Home feel like, you know, oh, we, everybody else has this fantastic measurement and we don't, and that's not the case, correct? It's definitely not the case. T TV is in the middle of such a change. And I have to say that out of home is a huge uh, piece of it and has always been sort of a bone of contention because well, see what happens is Nielsen, they say they measure out of home, but what they really measure because it's an audio watermark or an audio signature that their meters are picking up, um, they really measure people that go into other people's homes, you know, guest viewing and in a place where there's no noise, you know? And so what public place where you're watching TV has no noise, um, you know, that's interfering with that detection. And so there's always been a feeling that they, you know, vastly undercount the true, you know, out of home in airports and bars, you know, particularly in news and sports, you know, CNN and ESPN have for years looked at other ways to do this. I think they've even started coming um, to Geopath to learn more about the data that you have and if that could be helpful because you, know, you have all this location data that's in incredibly granular and you know the, if you want to call it the metadata about those locations, you know? And so uh, I do think um, that there's, you know, an opportunity here. I, I think we need to sort of figure out how to put it together. But I'm really excited to join the board and, and learn more. And um, I, I also uh, always tell Kim that I'm jealous because uh, Geopath is truly a joint industry committee, um, you know, with the, the buy side and the sell side all, you know, planning and designing and, and orchestrating and executing the measurement. And, uh, you know, Sim's not quite like that. We've never been able to really launch the measurement ourselves. We really just do pilot tests and, you know, try to 
bring more transparency to all the new techniques. And uh, so I've always, you know, been sort of jealous. I'd like to learn more about how, how a, a jig is actually run. <laughs> Well, fabulous. So you'll be able to get an insider's view at our next board meeting, Jane. So thank you so much for your time. I have one final question for you today. So speaking frankly, but I'm Ching, a little corny. So speaking frankly, if you could put any message on billboards across the country, across the world, on out of home screens everywhere, what would your giant message be? Well, you know, I have to obviously have something that lines up with our current uh, situation. And this isn't totally original. It's just something that I've been seeing that's really stuck in my mind. I mostly see it on the little, um, I don't even know what you call those signs along the side of the road that in New York State, they put them up when you're heading to the bridges telling you about the traffic and stuff. And there's one that I've been seeing a lot lately, and I think it should be on a huge billboard everywhere. And it should be with pictures of people, you know, all different kinds of people, like all around the edges. And it should say, it's a small task. Oh, it's a small ask. So it's a small ask, wear a mask. <laughs> Jane, fabulous. Thank you so much. If anyone has any questions for me or for Jane, you can reach me at geekout at geopath.org. Um, we'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your feedback on Speaking Frankly, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. That was great fun. <laughs>